All right. Well, you know, I think um, as usual, um, we'll start around 8.05 or 8.10. Um, we'll give, yeah, this is a bunch of people here, but let's give everyone a chance to um, join class and um, like we've seen before. You know, technically, we're supposed to have a break. Um, I think at Foothill, we, uh, we have, we're supposed to, um, by law, I think, have a bio break um, one hour into class. I think, I think the rationale is that um, no student will be forced to sit through um, two hours or, you know, more than an hour without having a bio break, you know. Um, never actually made a great deal of sense for computer science, I think, um, because as you know, um, in, uh, you know, when you're programming, you're on a roll and you just want to keep going. And if you want to take a break, or if you can't program, you can't program, right? I mean, your brain just doesn't work and you're staring at the same set of uh, problems um, and, and the program repeatedly, you know, it, it does the same thing. You can't see the bug, right? And and so if you can't program, you cannot program. And if you can program, yes, you can program. And um, so it never worked out uh, having fixed times for these breaks. Just like, you know, I found it never actually worked to have um, a fixed plan uh, because, you know, I spent so many years uh, teaching at Foothill with, uh, you know, I go through a great deal of trouble drawing up a plan for what I'm supposed to teach on that day and, you know, make sure I, you know, cross off the T's uh, and, and check mark um, all the things, the topics that, that never actually worked. You know, at the end of the quarter, um, the students had no idea what, um, you know, and for them too, it was just a matter of checking off the boxes in their notebooks or laptops saying, okay, but today these topics have been covered, 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 okay. And uh, what do you get at the end of that? Uh, really a whole bunch of check marks. <laughs> and I don't know if a whole bunch of check marks is really worth anything. So I think I think that uh, there's um, uh, alternate way of approaching the class, which by the way, this is the first quarter I'm trying this, right? Even as late as last quarter, uh, well, the last quarter I actually physically taught at, uh, at uh, Foothill, right? On face, face to face. Um, and I think the first half of the last quarter, I think, towards the last half, I think we started to realize as a group that, you know, these planned lectures weren't really working out for everybody. And then we started to uh, morph and become more fluid as it were, you know, and then responding to student uh, questions and then letting the student questions fill up the class. And, I, and in the end, uh, we realized that that also worked. You know, it's not like going uh, off track didn't take us to the end because um, if you, in fact, you can go to the the, the videos that um, from from the uh, online and from from the face to face sections that we didn't actually have to create videos. You know, I mean, we never actually planned to create any videos, but I think a bunch of the students um, in my face to face class thought the videos would be useful. So they, you know, so they brought their phones along. And I think originally um, they said, uh, or they must have been thinking that, well, you know, I'm not going to be able to focus all through the two hours in class. So let me take a recording and then refer to the recording later on. Um, and then I think they said, let's also post these recordings on YouTube. And, and that's how those videos came up, um, came about on YouTube. And so if you take a look at that, you'll see that, you know, towards the end of the class, uh, towards the end of the quarter, uh, we actually managed to cover everything. And then we also uh, ended up talking about more advanced stuff, which was not in the syllabus, but just because we've covered everything. And that actually worked out quite nicely, right? So I think that, um, but it does take a little bit of courage, I think, for all of us, not just me, to, to uh, stray off the beaten path. Because, you know, the beaten path has worked for many years at Foothill, uh, and in many colleges, right? So we have a plan and we're, this is what we're going to do and step by step, right? And, and then we get to the end. Uh, so that's our fallback, you know, default, and it has worked. Um, and so to say that, um, well, you know, uh, to hell with a beaten path, we're not going to do that. We're just going to go with, we're going to take, have a, take a feel for the class and see what the class wants and then go in that direction. And um, if we try that, it's, uh, it's a pretty risky move. 
you know, from, you know, think about it from uh, the uh, professor's uh, perspective, right? And from the student's perspective, I don't think it matters as much because you can always say, you know, you get good teachers and bad teachers and teachers who are um, good in a certain area. And, and so from a student's perspective, you can always say, you know, yeah, well, you know, we tried something else and it didn't work out. And uh, yeah, it's just like uh, having a professor who doesn't know how to teach. So I can, you know, find out, uh, go online and go to Khan Academy or some of these other resources and, and find out on my own. So I think from a student perspective, taking a risk like that is not such a big deal from, but from, a, I think from a, from a teacher's perspective, uh, taking a risk like that is, is actually a major risk because, you know, I mean, think about it, right? Because I could have got to the end of the quarter and, and found out that, um, well, oh my gosh, I wanted to cover, uh, you know, 100% of the syllabus, um, but I actually only ended up covering like uh, 50% because I was just going this way and that way and this way and that way, I never actually went to the end, but students kept pulling me this way and that way. I never actually managed to complete the whole syllabus. And then I come to week 11, I could basically tell you guys, well, guys, I mean, I didn't have, I didn't manage to cover everything all because of you, because you kept pulling me this way and that way. And so now it's all uh, your problem. Go ahead and master the rest of the material on your own and do the final. And that would have been disastrous, I think, right? I mean, I, I don't think I would have liked that to happen. I don't think you would have too. Not, although not as much as I would have disliked it, but certainly I think you would also have not liked it. Um, so, so it's actually working out quite nicely that we don't have uh, uh, an explicit plan um, and then follow what you guys want me to do. Now, sometimes I think um, when I ask for uh, you know programs, some of your programs, right? Um, uh, and let's let's uh, talk about your programs in class. Um, I think that um, because there's a big variance, right? As in all programming classes, especially the beginning classes, right? There's a, there's a big variance in the skill level. We get some people who already know the program, have been programming for a few years. They join just so they can get, um, you know, get clear prerequisite because, you know, unfortunately, you got to clear these before you go on to the next level. And so some people could be attending class just to test out of 2A so they can do 2B and other things. Um, and, and some people are totally new. Right? And they haven't got any idea um, uh, how to use a computer other than, you know, just using a phone, right? You know, you'll be surprised. There are many people who have been in my class uh, who've never actually used a computer other than to just browse um, or to purchase something on Amazon. Um, or, uh, you know, or you may even think about, you know, uh, grandpas and grandmas, right? So uh, most of them have not even used a computer, not even to browse, right? So their only browsing experience would have been on a mobile device, like an iPad or a phone. Right. So they asked, uh, you know, uh, grandkids to come in, you know, hey, can you get me that song on YouTube? I want to watch it. Right. So they do that. So, um, yeah. And and, for, and and so we have we have people like that. And, and so it's really hard to say, you know, come up with one of your programs. And uh, and some, sometimes we have some of the more experienced students uh, say, hey, I have this really cool program I'd like to showcase and, you know, and talk about. Um, and it's, it's a, it may be a really cool program. And uh, sometimes we may luck out, right? Sometimes even if it's a, if it's if it's slightly slightly ahead of uh, things that we've covered and likely to be a bit challenging, like you know the, the program that Daniel brought up uh, a few classes ago, yeah, we'll take a chance and, and go with it and see if everybody is able to relate to it and enjoy it. But sometimes it's not the case, and and I have uh, been in the situation this quarter when some of you have sent me code. Uh, asking, hey, can I demo this? Can I demo this? Um, believe it or not, some people have sent me code, right? Saying, as, uh, yeah, but you know, my challenge really is not just uh, selecting one um, because I mean, earlier the challenge used to be that nobody used to volunteer. Uh, and, and then sometimes I get more volunteers than I can handle. And sometimes I get, you know, a, a few volunteers, but the, the code they want to demo is not just right for a particular class, right? So it may end up intimidating or scaring off some of the beginner students. And all of those things we want to carefully avoid, right? So uh, it's, um, I think the greatest mistake that we can make in CS2A um, is being scared of, uh, scared off, not scared. You know, it's okay to be scared and, and continue to uh, plow ahead, um, but it's not okay to be scared off. Right, and scared off, meaning I'm gonna get uh, go away from here. Um, and um, in fact, it's it's more 
um, dangerous to me than it is to you, right? Because if, you, if you're scared off, you, I, I don't know, maybe you'll come back to it later on. But uh, if you're scared off this class, I have pretty much lost you for good for this quarter anyway, right? And, and maybe, you know, even if you come back, uh, you're probably not going to come back to my section, right? <laughs> because you have all these bad memories um, and you go into uh, some other section and maybe you'll get a good instruction, right? Which, which is tailored to your mode of learning. Um, it may work out. Uh, but at the same time, it's my loss, right? Because I've lost you. I've lost you. And you may be a really good student uh, and I lost you. And, um, and, and you went to someone else. Well, not that I, you know, I, I decry their gain. Uh, everybody should have their own share. Uh, all, all teachers should have their uh, share of uh, good students, right? I mean, strong students uh, and uh, weak students, right? I mean, every student, every teacher should also have weak students, right? Because weak students, uh, give you a different kind of satisfaction, right? They started off here and then I managed to push them ahead so much, right? Now they are feeling comfortable, you know, coding with other people. That's all, right? It's a small step, just getting comfortable coding, right? Uh, and um, many people, you know, especially you, after you get more experience, right? After you get more experience, it gets really hard to, uh, to, um, to relate, to mentally relate to people who are not comfortable coding. Right, and and then we think that, you know, what what gives? You know, this is such a simple thing, and this guy or this uh, person is um, feeling uncomfortable uh, approaching a computer. Um, so I think we many people are more likely to blame that person and say, well, you know, if they're uncomfortable with a computer, it's just that they're stupid or they don't know. They don't know, um, right? Uh, and that's because mostly they've forgotten. They've forgotten how uncomfortable they themselves were, you know, probably because there's so many things that have happened since then, right? So the first time you encountered a computer and had to code, you know, you two were, you know, um, a, a little um, uh, hesitant and, and um, or maybe eager to find out, but you still, you know, uh, could have been blown away, but, you know, not blown away, you know, uh, scared away by these uh, bugs you encounter. And, um, but then, uh, once you get past that and uh, a lot of good things start to happen, like your program behaves like you do, and you want it to, uh, then you start feeling more and more confident, right? And then you say, you know, I'm, and, uh, and then very quickly you forget. You forget the time when you are really frustrated. And I think if you don't forget the time when you are frustrated, um, you can always visit that place. You can always visit the place. Why would anyone visit the place when you are frustrated? Right? Why would anyone visit the place uh, when you had a bad time in life, right? Uh, when everything was going wrong? Um, I, I don't know. I, I think it actually is useful uh, in many ways to at least to prevent it from coming back to you um, uh, or to feel grateful, right? <laughs> you know, I think feeling grateful is a fantastic feeling, right? Just you feel grateful. And uh, so if you think back to the time when everything was going wrong and everything was bad in your life, um, and then now you compare. Uh, and then you feel you have that feeling of gratitude, yeah, which is is good. But um, also the other reason I think is useful is because uh, when you think back to the bad times, um, you are able to relate better to people who are still having a bad time instead of blaming it on them. Right? It's okay to be the president or of you know the country and things like that, and and um, and say. Um, well, you know, all these poor people suffering and it's because they brought it upon themselves, right? And I, you know, I can't even, I, if I had been in their shoes, I wouldn't be suffering because I'm clever and I wouldn't be going down all the bad, bad, uh, I wouldn't make all the bad decisions they did. And so it's just bad karma. They're, they're, you know, and, and it's easy to do that. You know, once you've got to the stage, when you've, when you've uh, lifted yourself off out above the cesspool, right? And, and you see all these people suffering. And um, it's easy to say that, well, they're suffering because they brought it on themselves. And, uh, and I think it, uh, but if you don't, by some chance, right? Maybe you, you yourself, when you are suffering, you suffered so much that it made an indelible impression on you, right? So if it made an indelible impression on you, then no matter how successful you become, you still are able to remember how it was when you suffered. And then um, you feel compassion <laughs> instead, of, uh, instead of contempt. Uh, for the people who are still, still suffering and say, well, you know, I, I was also suffered, but I did this and it worked for me. So maybe I can show them what I did 
And maybe if it doesn't help everyone, maybe it'll work for 25% of the people, right? What I did maybe works. So maybe at least 25% of those who are suffering may not suffer anymore if they try what I did, right? And yeah, another 25%, someone else had a different way to, uh, to find happiness and they described it and they, and another 25% got help by them, right? So, you know, so that is possible. And, and I think that if you do that, um, you will, you are set on a path to becoming a teacher yourself. No, I don't mean a professional teacher, right? You don't have to be a professional teacher or professor at a college or a high school uh, teacher teaching people, right? I don't mean teacher in that sense, because, you know, I think that um, many people, um, there is a certain pejorative, not pejorative, right? There's a certain, um, issue, right? There's lots of people don't want to become teachers um, because they have their goal set on something which they believe to be greater, right? Maybe, you know, each one has a different goal, right? So maybe someone wants to become a great artist. Uh, and, but I think that uh, whatever you become, um, no matter what, you know, a CEO of a major international multinational company, right? Whatever it is, I think everybody is a teacher, Right, and um, you teach because if you're a CEO, what is your first job as a CEO of a multinational? Well, what is your first job as soon as you get, you know, uh, get crowned king of a country? Right, if you get crowned king of a country, right? What is your very first job? You know, most people think I'm no king, I can go and do whatever I want. No, your very first job is, I think, in my, you know, I'm is, is uh, when you get crowned king is to uh, find your successor, right? Somehow find your successor, or if you cannot find one, you've got to groom one, right? You got to groom a successor because at some time you're going to be tired or you, you're you not going to be uh, unable to discharge your uh, kingly duties, right? So you got to give up the throne to someone. And at that time, uh, if you're not in a democracy, right, you better give it up to someone who is sympathetic towards you, right, or at least who has the same kind of goals as you, because, you know, and all your life work is going to be destroyed, or even maybe you're going to be, uh, you know, uh, if someone takes over the throne uh, against your will, who knows, right, I don't know of any king in history who has been kindly towards insurrectionists, right, so, uh, and, um, yeah, so uh, even as a CEO, you're gonna be teaching, right? So you're gonna be teaching other people the skills of your trade, how you got to be the CEO, not by you know whipping people into submission. You never get to be a CEO like that, right? So you, you get to be a leader just by doing the right thing so that other people can look at you and say, wow, you know, uh, he, that guy or that girl is not telling me to do anything, but they're doing something which obviously seems to be working. So all you need to be is really in their orbit, right? In the vicinity of these great people. That's all it takes really, right? And, and, and then these two people teach uh, by not explicitly teaching. Right, they're not going to tell you to do anything. They just show you, right? Um, if I was in a quandary like that, um, wow, you're in a really tough spot. Let's try this. Let's try that. Let's try. This. So they're thinking ahead, and then they're thinking through the problem with you, not from you know instructing you to do something, but they're saying, let's try this and see if it works, right? And then they find the solution, and then um, you are with them, and 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 you see how they work. You see the brilliant machinations of of their mind. Um, which you can only observe through the actions, right? You can see what they're thinking. I say, wow, all right, uh, so that's fantastic. And you learn, you learn, right? So you learn, you, when you learn from someone, they are a teacher, right? So it doesn't matter, you can be anything you want, uh, even the president of the United States, right? But you're still a teacher in that sense because uh, you're teaching by example, not instruction maybe, by example. So I think that being able to relate to, um, to the underlings as it were, not you know, not status wise, underlings meaning people who are just starting out on a particular path and, and they need to get to um, what you're trying to um, teach them. Um, and uh, I think that, uh, and then you would set yourself up to be a great teacher, right? And, uh, and people will, you know, say, there's something valuable in that class or something valuable by following that person or being in the vicinity of that person, right? Because you tend to pick up these things that are useful for your own life. So that's, that's what we're doing. Um, I don't think we're gonna cover, hey, Daniel, yeah, ask a question. Um, yeah, type of structures, no, I'm not gonna cover that, okay? You can find out all those details by yourself. And, and also type def and these compiler directives, they're not really part of CS2A. Uh, and also these are you know, pretty forward, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, this is a, this is a, um, a keyword called type def, right? It allows you to define a type so that you can use that 
word as a shortcut for some complex things. We will use type def. Uh, I mean, in fact, we're not going to cover it, but in CS2B and CS2C, we'll just use type def, like as though we've already known it. So bec and the reason I say that is because um, there's not a great deal to it. You know, you can just pick up a textbook and, and, um, and, and read through it. And in 10 minutes, you'll, you'll know exactly what type def is. And you can experiment with it, right? You can experiment with it and find out. Okay, so uh, those are things that you could do. Um, all right, so, um, all right, so I made it. I, I made it so that I can see clearly when someone is sharing a screen. All right. Okay, so today's class. Uh, here's what we'll do. Um, I, I have a rough plan, and again, as usual, we'll just fall back on this if there's nothing else. Um, and those of you who sent me programs you want to demo today, and I said, let's try it later, just hang on to the program, okay? And, and bring it up again in, in a couple of weeks, because in, in a couple of weeks, we'll be in week 10 or week 11. And uh, that will be a much better time to demo some programs um, that uh, make use of everything we've learned in CS2A, right? Uh, today, if we don't have a plan, um, I would like to uh, pick up one of the programs that we worked on last class. I don't know who the last person to work on the code last class. By the way, everybody who's here, who's here now, can you just say uh, yes or present in chat so that I can know who to call? Um, yeah, okay, thank you. Daniel, Alexis, Rizzo, Wen, Giorgio, Nick. Wow, all right, this is really fast. Um, yeah, yeah keep, keep going. All right, so that's... Um, yeah, so Andrew here, so made Nicholas. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, so there's this is a fair bunch of people here. And um, who was the last person to who was the last person to code last class? I, I forget. Was it just was it, it was Thursday? It was Thursday. Who was here last class uh, coding on screen last class? Momo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Momo. All right. Uh, so in fact, if you look in the chat uh, window, Momo has posted the replete uh, link. I'd like someone else, right? I'd like someone else who hasn't uh, gone yet, right? If you guys are okay with this plan, this is what we should do, all right? Someone else uh, who hasn't gone before, uh, certainly not Momo, Daniel, Lax, uh, Chan, Andrew, okay? None of these people. Uh, I want someone who, and Flavio, you've been up too, right? Yeah, yeah, Flavio has been um, up here. Um, is it is it is it right that I don't have anyone in class today who hasn't had a chance? No, oh, when hasn't had a chance? When? When? Hey, hey, when? Do you, do you, I, well, I don't want to put you on the spot. Okay. Um, so when Nicholas made uh, it says there's a whole bunch of people who haven't had a chance. So what you could do is just pick up the code um, uh, that um, Momo uh, posted and then share your screen and then. Uh, we'll take a look at some concepts today that um, we can bring to bear on the existing project, right? Um, so let's see what we can do. Um, I can do uh, static variables, static variables. Uh, Andrew had a question. Um, Andrew had a question. Um, well, I don't know if it was Andrew or Andy, uh, last class or the class before that, saying, how do you, how do you create uh, const read-only members uh, inside of a class. Is it right, Andrew? Did you ask that question? I know Andrew's in class, so I'll just wait for him to say yes or no. That right? must have been uh, Andrew. Um, yeah, I think I was asking, it was uh, two classes ago um, about, uh, yeah, static versus dynamic variables. Right. No, no, it wasn't, wasn't about static and dynamic. I think um, you asked about read only variables. That's right. Yeah. 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 So we, we uh, were. So Someone wanted to We're have looking at that. the um, yeah. Um, we were looking at the private versus public uh, equality, and we were discussing whether or not, like, uh, if if it was possible to make something publicly readable but not writable. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So uh, we can take a look at that today, um, and um, yeah. Unfortunately, I won't go into the details of and we can find out really easily later on if you want you can send me a message how to create a read-only member right so which is not static now i'm gonna do we'll do static uh, static read-only members today and there's a, a bunch of subtleties that i you know we can use 
that example to dive into, um, and which you may not know otherwise, right? So we'll do static constants, but member constants, um, I don't want to get into uh, in CS2A anyway, because um, they're initialized in a different way from uh, other uh, members. Um, but there's also another reason why I thought yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's something called a copy constructor. A copy constructor is take take a, a, an object and a, create a new object, brand new object, um, but all the uh, fields of the old object, uh, object are copied into the new object. So it's called a copy constructor. So you know already that you have what is called a default constructor. And if anybody is interested uh, today, uh, bring up the copy constructor and say, hey, we have the non-default constructor and the default constructor. Can we also implement a copy constructor? Yeah, sure, let's, we'll go ahead and do that. It's very easy and I'll show you how to do that. But if you have const uh, members, um, then it becomes, uh, diff you know, it, you know, it's, uh, it's the copy constructor will get deleted, I think, by the compiler. I think we'll have an experiment and find out because uh, why? because the compiler can't deal with it, right? Because when you have a copy constructor, um, it will create the object with the fields already populated, and then it's going to take the new members, new fields, and put them there, you know, overwrite, but you can't overwrite a const member. So, um, so you have to initialize it using an initialization list or something like that. So we won't go into const members today at any rate, right? But we'll go into const statics. Uh, yeah, 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 Augie, uh, yes. A copy constructor is is a, you know, it's just, you have done default constructors and, uh, and the non-default constructors. And, and a constructor by definition is something that constructs your object, right? You start, you, know, you, you have a bunch of memory locations, bytes, and a constructor says, okay, that chunk of memory is now this object. And I've constructed an, an object in memory, right? And, and it's structured like that, right? It's constructor, right? So it's structured, you know, four bytes here, three bytes here, and so on and so forth. So, so it's constructor. Um, that's, how you, that's how an object comes into being, right? An object comes into being by being manufactured, by being constructed. So we can do it in a default way and a non-default way. We've seen both of those before. But there's also another way to do it, which is called a copy way. A copy way is, is called a copy constructor. It says, you know, I will give you an existing object. You make another object, brand new one. It's a copy of that object, meaning all the values, all the member names, everything, you know, all the member values, and you know, everything should be exactly the same. So that is also another way in which you can create a uh, an object from scratch. Uh, and what the compiler does is basically, you know, set apart some memory exactly the same way as it does for a default constructor, except when it comes to filling in the values, it's not going to put in default values or the parameter values, but it's going to take values from the existing object and stick them in there. That's a copy constructor. And um, if you do that, you got to make sure that the, all the fields are assignable, right? You can't have a const member, which means it can be assigned, right? So I do have those nuances we can cross the bridge when we get to it. But for now, uh, we will just do, we'll take the uh, existing code and um, and do statics. We'll, we'll do a static member. Oh, we'll do destructors too, right? This is in two lines, right? Uh, we can also do destructors. Uh, yeah, actually it will work out very nicely. In fact, with the static uh, and the destructor, um, it makes total sense because then we can have a static variable in the class that will get updated. Uh, and then the destructor needs to also update it, right? So your population, population, number of pets in the world, right? So we'll create a pet population member. Uh, and then every time a pet is born, constructed, the population count needs to be incremented, right? And every time a pet dies, destroyed, the population count needs to be de decremented, right? So both constructor and de destructor need to be invoked Right? Well, they, they will be invoked anyway, whether you like it or not. The, the compiler is going to invoke the destructor, except that, you know, if you don't define a destructor yourself, just like the constructor, right? You get a freebie destructor, right? And, and the compiler will call its own freebie destructor, which really doesn't nothing, right? It just says take that memory and free it, right? Which, which was belonged to the object. Now it's free. So that's all it does. But we can, uh, C, uh, unlike in Java, right? C allows you to create a hook that will be will will force a destructor uh, to give you control right the programmer will now be able to to define what the destructor does which means that once a destructor is called the that destructor method can go and fix turn change variables and do you know whatever it wants before finally saying okay the destructor is done 
you know, the object can now be completely disassembled and thrown away, right? So you, you get a hook to go into that special logic uh, when that happens only when the object dies. And uh, C++ lets you do that. So we can do that in combination with static. And I think, is that enough to last all of uh, today? Uh, well, if not, if not, we'll do something else, right? Because next week or even Thursday, we can start talking about it on Thursday. Um, uh, we want to talk about some, um, some algorithms, very, very simple uh, algorithms that uh, operate on objects. And let's take sorting because sorting is in the syllabus too, I think. Um, and, and we'll take, uh, we'll um, modify the sort, uh, the, 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 this class that you've created to, to do some uh, sorting internally. So we'll, we'll try that on Thursday, maybe next week. Um, and then we'll also talk about recursion and all these other things later. Okay, so um, hey, this is one more thing I wanted to talk about today, but maybe it'll just fall out of our discussions. Uh, so destructors, statics, um, Yeah, but I don't know if you guys can see the squirrel. He's just making his way over to Peter. All right, um, to the food. <laughs> All right, so um, destructors, um, statics. Oh, yeah, file streams, file streams. Oh, if any, any, anybody, anybody remembers, um, tell me. Tell me um, uh, when we start coding. Um, tell us uh, at some hiatus, right? Tell us. Uh, can you also show us how to use files, right? So you know how to read from the keyboard, right? Using CN. Uh, you also know how to read from random strings in memory using string stream, right? Uh, but how do you read from a file on disk, right? And, and the beauty of C++ and C and Unix is that everybody, everything and everything is treated as a file. In fact, even when you were uh, reading from C and uh, writing to C out, um, as far as the operating system is concerned, uh, it just thinks that C in and C out are files. It basically sends things out to be written to a file. And then the device driver, um, which is sitting inside of the operating system knows that, hey, I got to send something to a file, but this really is not a file, it's a keyboard. Oh, and it's, it's a screen. So I'm gonna make the programmer believe it's a file, but I'll just translate everything for the screen and send it to the screen instead. So the device driver knows how to talk to the screen, but the, but the illusion it presents to the uh, programmer is that it is simply a file. Right, and, and that's how that's how we were managed to build so many cool things, right? So it's because it abstracts away a lot of these uh, nitty gritty details. So if you if you ask me at some point um, to how how do you read from a file, I can I can show you how to do that. It's just three or four lines, right? Three or four lines, um, which is inserted into the existing code, and we'd be able to read from a file, right? And, and if not now, you know, in in the next couple of classes, we'll have an opportunity to um, to read a file. I sort it and write it back maybe, I don't know. We'll, we'll try that, okay? All right, so I would like someone to, um, by the way, you know, I don't know if you're um, familiar with the way that we do these things in class, uh, in case you're, uh, you know, uh, habitually late and miss the early, earlier part of uh, our class or you don't know how we do it. Um, um, I will just keep talking and talking and talking after class starts uh, until such time as, one of you grabs the screen, okay? Because, you know, I can't just be sitting here and watching you, right? And uh, you have no idea what's going on. So one of you has to grab the screen, basically, you know, grab uh, replete, uh, you know, Momo's replete link and, uh, and then uh, share your screen. And once you start to share the screen, we'll start coding, right? And essentially, you know, and, and don't be scared, right? You're not going to be coding. You're not going to be put on the spot saying, hey, what do you do now? What do you do now? I never do that. You know, ask all the other people who've been up here, right? So when nobody tells uh, people, nobody has told Momo or Lex or all these people who've been up here, nobody tells them, you know, uh, what do you do now? Tell me what do you do now, right? You don't get put on the spot. That's really nasty, isn't it, right? So uh, I don't like to be put on the spot like that myself. So I wouldn't do it to you. So we will basically say, uh, do this, do this, do this. And then you can ask and say, why do I do that, right? And then that's a good way to, to explain to you why, right? And sometimes, you know, like, uh, yeah, all right. So uh, yeah, someone has to take the screen, okay? One of you who hasn't been up here before, take the screen, don't be fearful because I'm, you know, everybody's here. We're gonna walk you through the code. You're just in the capacity of a typist, right? So you're just gonna type it in type in what we're talking about. 
and you won't have any problems. I guarantee you won't have any problems. And by the time you're done, you'll be glad you did it because it would have saved you like 20 hours of time before the exam, right? 20 hours of time before you start a project because that concept that you're working on in class today in front of everybody else is basically just nails, your, nails itself to your head. And then, you know, it's, it, you just, you're doing yourself a great favor by stepping up and saying, I'll take the screen and start coding today. Thank you, Alexis, okay? It's not bad once you start, okay. There you go, thank you, Alexis, okay? So, uh, yeah, all right, so someone, can someone please click on Momo's link and share your screen and then we'll take it from there, okay? I'm thinking the first thing we'll do is, uh, is, um, is um, yeah. yeah, the first thing you do is, uh, yeah, we'll do, we'll do a destructor and a static variable, okay? The destructor on the static variable. Um, all right, so pick someone. Uh, Giorgio, you've done it already. So, all right, if nobody else does it in five minutes, all right, do two minutes, all right? Um, so, Giorgio, you've done it twice, okay? No, no, you're not going today. Okay, uh, who else? Or right, someone other than Giorgio, right? So, so, so pick up the screen. Uh, give me a sec, okay? I just want to go and really quickly check if Peter has had his uh, snack or not. Because he was going this way, I want to make sure that he actually went to his food. Yeah, probably, right? So uh, give me a sec and, 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 and pick someone, right? By the time I'm back in a minute, someone should be on the screen, taking the screen and be working on your code, okay? So I'll be back in just two minutes. One minute, okay. Okay, nobody, nobody is gone. Nobody's taking the screen. Rizzo, uh, you've you've actually got a moving background behind you. Yes. yes. How do you how do you get a moving background? To, uh, you got a, a live live gif or something? And how do you? Do yes. That? It's live live. Kind of like you can find it on the video background. Hey, hey, wait, too many people. Yeah, yeah, Rizzo, go. Uh, I mean, it's on video background. There is a like video link, a kind of object here, right next to the mic. One sec, one sec. Hey, Rizzo, stop, stop. One sec. Uh, right, I we can, I couldn't hear anything you said uh, because of this echo. I'm um, sorry. Someone was saying some, I, I need to do something. Actually, it's only Rizzo, right? Someone in Rizzo's background is speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. I have a friend with me, so he was talking. Oh, I see. Oh, so it looks like you're actually on a beach right now. <laughs> yes. Are you on a beach? No. No, no, I'm at home. It's kind of a virtual background. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a live, live virtual background. Uh, that's really cool. So you got, you got to share how you do that in, in, in your, uh, in your, in, in your uh, chat at some point, right? So, okay. That's really cool. I, I just does Zoom let you have live background? Yes. Okay. It's All kind right. of GIF. Oh, it is a GIF. So you just pick a GIF with uh, animation. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, all right, uh, all right. So why, so why isn't uh, yeah? Augie has also gone on screen. Augie, Augie, have you been on screen before? Yes, Augie has been on screen. Okay, well, hey can, guys, um, right? Can I can I just take the liberty of? I know I promised Alexis I won't do this before, but when um, when do you want to go? Right? We'll we'll be with you. We'll be by your side all the time. Right, every second, you don't have to be afraid of anything, because um, I, you know, you're the first name I saw today that uh, hasn't been up here, and I would like for you to have that experience, so that you can take it away with you, and then you can think about it, noodle, noodle on, you know, but you think about the fact that you know, uh, did it help you or not? Is, is that okay with you, Wen? I'm sorry for putting you on the spot. Thank you. All right, if you, because if you feel uncomfortable, you can still take time. You know, you say I'm not going to go for another three or four weeks. That's fine. But if you are able to take the screen, okay, uh, click on uh, Momo's link, take the screen, and then we'll go it. Awesome, thank you. All right, click on the link and then share your screen, and we'll go from there.
So uh, the, the concepts that we want to cover today are basically um, yeah, static variables, destructors. And if we get a chance, we'll also do file streams. All right, great, great, thank you. Fantastic. All right. Um, now, um, can, can we try a really quick experiment before we uh, start coding? Uh, on, in the, uh, on the right side where you have the black, uh, the, the black terminal, can you type something? And I want to see if it works, right? If it works, I, you know, right. So type in uh, yes, Y-E-S and hit return. Oh, all right. Oh, hit control C, control C. Okay, great. You're, so it turns out that you're actually at a full, or, you know, full-fledged um, Linux type of terminal, like a Mac, Mac OS or, uh, what machine is this, by the way? Is it a Mac or a PC? Rizzo, you just went last class, okay? So we'll see. If nobody else wants to go, you can go, all right? Um, yeah. Um, using Windows, okay. So somehow, oh, this is, you're on Replete. Repl yeah, yeah, the, the REPL, um, this is inside a browser, right? This is inside a browser. So uh, I think what's going on is that they're running your code inside of a, yeah, they're giving you a Unix terminal right there. So we have an opportunity here to uh, hit control L, Hit control L, control L. Okay, great, it also clears the screen. Do LS space dash LA, LS. Hey, Ni, nee, you're asking your mom to do something? <laughs> okay, all right. Um, yeah, okay. So yeah, you actually have a pretty cool uh, uh, environment here. Uh, in fact, uh, type what I say, and then you, uh, right, type, uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Or, you know, no, no, type uh, SEQ, sequence, right? SEQ stands for sequence, SEQ. These are all Unix commands, by the way. You're getting a, a side lesson. Well, you know, a side lesson in Unix and Linux when you do C and C++. By the way, you know, if you are doing C, it's almost a, a no-brainer that you're also picking up Linux on the side, right? Because in, in those days, C and Unix used to write hand in hand, right? So a sequence and then um, a space, space, vertical bar, vertical bar is I think shift uh, slash uh, vertical bar. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, head, head, head 10. Uh, no, uh, dash 10, dash 10, sorry, dash 10, right? Okay, this is gonna print the first 10 lines of the output of sequence. Oh, dash N 10 maybe. Oh no, sequence. Oh, sequence dash, why does, I, oh, I see, sequence. Uh, sequence, uh, sequence five, There's sequence 100, sequence 100, say 100. I don't think it's one, yeah, yeah, sequence 100. Okay, so if you said sequence 100, it'll just print the first 100 numbers, one on each line. And then a head says, uh, take whatever's coming in as, uh, which the output of sequence goes as the input of uh, head, that's the vertical bar. That's what the vertical bar means, right? So take the output of sequence and then uh, take only the head of it, the 10 lines, 10 line head of it, and that's passed through everything else, just eat it or discard it, send it to the sink. That's what it means. Now you can also send this into a file, right? So uh, after go uh, press control P, control P, get to the previous command. Okay, now a space and then vertical bar again. Uh, not vertical bar, right? Get rid of the vertical bar, uh, do greater than, yeah, 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 put it in a file. Hey, uh, who is this when? Uh, so you were reluctant to come up on screen and, uh, and you know, handle the keyboard. But when I see you typing, uh, it feels to me like you're not a newbie, right? I mean, you have experience because even before I said use vertical, you know, redirect into a file, you type the greater than there. Um, so I, I can't uh, believe that you are like a total noob. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, so you should have volunteered even before, right? You should, when I asked for volunteers, you know, that's idea, okay. So you should do, why you, what? all right. So don't feel, okay, all right. So you do that, enter, enter, enter. Uh, and now ls dash l, a, ls dash l, a, dash l, a. All right, so now you see test.txt, that's a file you created, which has uh, the numbers one to 10 inside of the file, instead of coming to the screen, uh, like the previous command, now it got sent into a file. Now, if you, is that, that file, how big is the file? It's 21 bytes, right? You look at that, the, the, that column there um, is, is 21. It says that byte has 21 bytes inside of it. Now, how do you know it's 21 bytes? Now, how many lines? So, but you see the contents of the file, the contents of the file should be one, two, three, four, and so on up to 10, right? So 10 lines, 
uh, you got 10 digits there and then a, an extra zero on the last line. So you, you'd only expect 11, right? You only expect 11 bytes in the file, but still it says the test.txt file is 21 bytes big. Why is it 21 bytes big when you can only see 10, you know, 11 bytes in there? Why is that? Can someone tell me that? Return char says, thank you, Nick. All right, so every line is also terminated with a new line character, right? A new line character. So you got two bytes on each line. On the last line, you got three bytes, one, a zero, and a new line character. So that's why you got 21 bytes. If you wanna see the invisible characters, you can actually do this, right? Ca type cat, cat. Uh, yeah, when, type cat. No, 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 you can control C, control C, get, you can control, yeah. cat space dash v means uh, make all the invisible characters visible right now type test.txt ah it doesn't okay um well okay so it's there is a new line that i hope that cat dash v v will make visible but there is a new line you can still make you see it by using od and things like that um yeah, well, well ideally what you want to see is you know one and then followed by control j right control j is your New line character made visible, but um, but it's there. It's there. That's just doing. It's twenty one bytes. Okay. All right. So now what we want to do? We will leave that file there because that's the way we're going to create the file next class and, and then read from the file and re write to the file. We can we actually we can do that in this class too if we have time. All right. So here's what we want to do. Um, so we want to take your constructor here, and then uh, create a. A static variable inside of that constructor. Okay, so go into your code window on the left, and then uh, let's make a static variable called uh, population, right? Population, and make it a private. Um, well, I don't know. I don't know if you need to fork it because um, after this, if you save your, I don't know how Replete works. But I think if you save it, you get a brand new URL. So the old URL is still linked to the, you know, uh, the code that Momo uh, left for you. And then at the end of today, you may get a new URL. Is that, is that how it works, Momo? Or if 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 uh, when changes your code, does he end up changing the whole thing? Oh, the URL is M R N A. Oh yeah yeah yeah. So I think um, the URL is kind of fixed. It just points to, yeah, fork it, fork it. Yeah, take take your own copy of the code. Uh, yeah, honestly, it doesn't, yeah. Um, it, you go ahead, go ahead and do it. Yeah. I wonder why it doesn't give you a new URL for every uh, change you make, because it doesn't take a lot of, uh, bytes to chain, store all the different versions, right? Even if you have a million versions of your code, um, it doesn't take a great deal of space to store it in the back end because we have some very clever algorithms that will only detect the changes. And so what happens in all these version control systems like Git, well, not, not so much Git, right? But the previous version control systems um, is that it'll store the first thing that you check in and then it'll only change the differences, right? It'll only store the differences. And so uh, you can go, any, any version you want, you can just generate from the very first one and then applying all the patches, you know, the changes in sequence, you get the, so it doesn't take a great deal of bytes. So I don't understand why they can't store the individual. You know, like in Google Docs, right? Any of the online editors, Google Docs, you can go back, you know, you can have a document that you've been working on since, you know, your life journal. Let's say you, you're maintaining a life journal on Google Docs and you started it when you were three years old, right? Uh, and now you're like uh, 35 years old uh, and you go back to your Google Doc uh, and then you can look at the versions all the way up to when you're three years old, you'll see those versions. Because you know what Google Docs does is basically only store the incremental changes and then it'll reconstruct the later versions. So uh, I don't know why Ruckley can also do, cannot also do that, right? Even, uh, even a brain dead site like cpp.sh does that, right? Because it gives you a brand new URL every time you save your code. All right, so have you finished your forking? This is yours? Okay, when Kai, great, great. Okay, so create a, uh, create a, uh, uh, a, um, a static variable under private, under your age, under your age, yeah, call it uh, static, static, uh, uh, unsigned int, right? Or you say size t, size t is unsigned int, right? You say, so, yeah, you don't need uh, unsigned anymore. Once you say size t, you don't need unsigned because size t is uh, un unsigned by default. Size t is just shorthand for, in fact, you know what Daniel was talking about before saying type def and all, size t is just a shorthand 
uh, definition of unsigned long, right? Unsigned long is, you know, goes from zero to 4 billion. That's the range of numbers you can store in unsigned, right? Size T population, right? So we're gonna call it population. Right, so now we have a, a static number called population. Uh, when the, uh, the thing to keep in mind about static members is that the static member is, is very important, okay? Is everybody following along? This is a very, very simple, subtle thing that I'm gonna say now, which is extremely important to keep in your mind. If a class has a static member, any static member, right? If it has a static member, that member is not attached to the object, right? It is not part of the object, which means that when you create an object, that member is not going to be created with it. So all normal members are part of the object. It's in, they live inside the bag. They live inside the package that comprises the object. All normal members are in there. A static member is not inside that box. It's not inside the bag, right? A static member is outside. It's global. The only reason it's now, it's, it's, we call it static and it's inside of a class. They're also called class variables, by the way, right? They're not object variables, but they're class variables. And the reason they're called class variables or static is because they don't belong to an object, but they belong to the class of which that object is an instance, right? So the distinction there is that you can have a million objects all of the same class. Right, you've got a pet class and I can create a million pets, right? Now, each one of those pets has its own age. It has its own name. It has its own favorite food, yes? Because everyone is a copy. However, they all don't have their own population because the population is not part of the class. It's not part of the object, right? The population is part of the class. It's written on the blueprint. It's written on a template. There's only one copy. There's only one copy of population that lives outside. Right? It is packaged together with the pet class, but it's outside, right? It, it, it also leverages some of the other cool properties you get from C++, which means statics can also be, you know, private and public and all those things. It, it gets those other features, but still, it is just syntactic sugar, you know, icing, right? That says, well, it's really a global variable out there, but we're going to give you the option of packaging it inside the class and making sure that you know it it has some it shares some of the useful things that uh, members do right so that's what it is so we have the age which is an integer that is created every time a pet is created you get a new age variable but you also have population which is not created every time an object is created so if you wanted to initialize population how would you do that you can't initialize the population in a constructor because a constructor doesn't even know what population is. Well, you know because it's a class variable, right? But a constructor doesn't have a copy of population to, and besides, you don't need an object, right? So if, if an object, if, if, if a class has a static variable, you don't need an object in order to be able to access that variable because that object, that, that member population does not require an object in order to live. That, you know, it, that member comes into existence at the moment the compiler sees a template, right? Because as soon as it sees a template, you know, it creates a variable. It does not have to wait until the object is created in order to create the variable. The moment the template is seen, the compiler will create the variable for you, right? So that's why um, initializing a, a static variable is slightly different from initializing a, uh, you know, a member. So the way to, uh, to initialize a static variable, usually, you know, I would say just do it out of line, right? So in C++, um, this is a really wacky thing, right? Some static members can be initialized in line inside of a class definition, right? And numeric types like integers and characters being initialized inside of a class definition. But the, the other types have to be declared or, you know, initialized outside the class definition, which is a bit of a pain uh, for, uh, newbies, especially to remember, uh, but you got, I don't know, you just got to get used to it, I think. All right, so let's initialize population. Um, and we want to, we want a global line, right, that executes exactly once when the program is called and after that it doesn't execute, right? So let's put a line after the semicolon of the pet class, right, at the end of the pet class, right? Yeah, and yeah, hit enter. Now we want to initialize population to zero. And the way you do that is by saying pet double colon population population equals 
zero, right? Uh, yeah, um, and, and I think Momo used spaces on either side of the equal sign, right? So we can be consistent there. All right, now a population, what type of variable is population? Is an integer, right? Or is an, a size t, right? So in this, uh, in this initialization step, you put size t at the beginning of line 28, right? Yeah, size t. Now that means that there, okay? Now that means that population is a static member. It belongs to the pet class. And as soon as the program starts up, right? Don't wait until the class is used to create an object. As soon as the program starts up, initialize it with the value zero. That's what that line means. Now, is everybody clear with that line? Because that line is not, is not very self-documenting. I don't know, right? It's, it's really hard. Um, I, I think it's just something to get used to. Because I, well, in my case anyway, it's just, just something that I got used to. Right. Um, yeah. It's, it's Does it matter if we put it before right. or after the class? Sorry. Does it matter if we put it before or after the class? Right. Why don't we try it? Why don't we to take that and put it uh, uh, on top before the class and see if it compiles? Okay. So do that right now. Just copy it, line twenty-eight. Put it on top. All right. And, and compile it and see what happens. Well, you know, already you know it's not going to compile, right? Because it doesn't know what pet is at the time. Yeah. Because. Before even it knows that there is something called pet, you're referring to something that's supposed to be inside of pet. Yeah, does, does that make sense? Yep. Okay, right. Now, um, now we've got a population and it's set to zero. What we need to do now is you don't, so is, is population something that you want to set her for? Do you want to, do you want to, do you want to give the, the users an ability to fiddle with population? Right, the census count, right? So, which happened like a couple of months ago. Um, do we want users to have the ability to say, uh, "Here is a get population. Here is a set population. You can call use the set population call to go and change the population." Right. So, uh, is it? Do you think that it makes sense to create a setter for a population? Because you know, for every every one of these, we're going to create setters and getters, right? So um, do you think it makes sense? Yes, thank you, Giorgio, right? So, you know, you can't set the population. You can't, you know, you can't just say, oh, you know, the census counts came in. Now I want to go in to say the, the electoral counts, right? I want to go and set the electoral count to, <laughs> to 271, right? Uh, you can't do that. Uh, you just got, you got, you, you don't have the power to set some variables. You got to make sure that what, is legally allowed, rightfully able to set the count. Those are the ones that should be able to set the count. You can't just go in and say, I got the power to change these things. You know, I can't go, you, you don't have the power. That's the truth, right? So um, how, how do we go ahead and uh, use this population? Well, obviously, even though you don't have the ability to set the population, you can always go to a government website, right? And say, what is the current population of the United States? I'll go to the census. Uh, website and say, oh, this is the current population of the census, uh, you know, website, you know, the, the US and so on. So you can read it, you, but you just can't set it. But well, you can change the population, right? You can go and have a lot of kids and change the population, uh, or you can die and change the population too. But um, you can't, you can't go and set it explicitly. So, uh, so you can't set it, but you want to get it. You want to get the population. So you want to get her for population, but not a setter. So let's go ahead and create a getter for a population, but we will uh, conveniently uh, ignore um, setting, creating a setter. Okay, so create a getter for population, and you know if you're stuck, we'll walk you through it. Okay, so getter the size, the getter for population is going to return size t, and it says it's called get population, and it's going to return population. Okay. Um, I think there was a change we made uh, to Momo's code last class, which somehow was not um, showing up here, right? I think if I'm not mistaken, last class, we went and made all the getters const methods. Did we make them const methods last class? We tagged them all const, yes? Because these getters don't change the value. They just get you the value. So, um, so make all those methods const, right? Make, yeah, not there. Uh, if you say it's const there, it means it returns a const, right? We want to say, no, 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 it, it returns a string, but uh, the uh, object itself is going to be const. It doesn't change the object. So if you want the method to be const, you put the const after the closing parentheses, right? Uh, yeah, there, you say const. That means it's a method, you can, it's safe to call. It's safe to call it because it's not going to change the object.
right? Uh, and uh, by the way, there is a space, uh, I, you've used a space after the, um, uh, before the opening brace uh, in the other three getters. The, for population, there is no space. Right. No. Okay. So yeah, I was. In fact, I knew that you were going to do this, um, and uh, I was waiting for you to do that. Really, not not to point it out, but I know that everybody will do that, right? So because it's a static method, uh, it hasn't doesn't have an object to work on, right? Static methods don't need an object, right? I don't. I can create. I can use. I can right. So don't need an object. So there's no. Uh, it doesn't make sense to say you can call this thing and it's not going to change the object. Yeah, and then the compiler will say, what object, man? I don't have an object here, right? So uh, the const tag does not apply to static uh, classes, or, you know, static member manip manipulating objects. So there is no const on the get population. For that reason, some, pro some programmers will also um, separate the static getters from the regular getters with a blank line because, you know, semantics is slightly different because the, the static getters yeah, yeah, right, because they are static methods. And so because it operates on something that does not require an object, it is called a static method. The method itself is static because a static method and static objects can be called and invoked and used and read even when an object does not exist. So you got to tag the method also as static. On line 23, at the beginning of the line, just say static. Okay, all right, that means the get population is a static method, which does not require an object to work on, uh, and it will return a population of the static class. Uh, and um, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't require an object to work on, right? So, and then that takes care of that part of it. Now, it, is, is it all done though, by the way? Is it all done? No, it's not all done, right? Because we have the population, we've initialized it to zero, but no matter how many pets are being created, the population never changes, right? So now if you can compile it and run it, it's gonna compile and run just fine, but you'll never see the population, right? So you'll never see the population. So it's just, right? So now go to your main method, go to your main at the, I think it's at the end, Right, and then uh, at the beginning, right before you before you even create the first pet, yeah, right there. Uh, say uh, the current pet population is, and then you call yeah yeah see out, and the, the current pet population is um, equals equals yeah okay uh, yeah, and then say use the getter. Right now, how do you how do you invoke? Yeah, okay. Well, you, obviously, you know not just bash. I think you know how to call static methods also, um, right? Um, actually, can you drag the, uh, the 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 vertical divider a bit more to the right so that um, yeah, it doesn't scroll over? Yeah, I think that's fine. That's good. That's good. Okay. Now, uh, what um, what when is done there is to is to invoke the get population method that uh, um, you know when just uh, defined is, is it he or she by the way I mean if it, if it matters to you um, just say right uh, he, all right so that so uh, get population he so he defined get population and he's invoking it but note that there is no object but the method is inside the object there's no object to say pet dot or my pet dot get population it doesn't make any sense because get population doesn't work on my pet it works on the pet class okay so he said and this is a static method and that's how you invoke a static method you, you invoke a static method by saying pet, the name of the name of the class itself not the object the name of the class is pet pet double colon get population okay so that's and then you want an end line after that end line after that now uh, copy that entire line. Triple, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Triple click. Oh, I think you need a standard or something. Is he? Aren't you using namespace? Why? Why do you have? Why do you have? Uh, why do you have the underline on endl? It it says it's. What what, what does it say? Uh, run it. Run it. We'll see the compiler error. Reference to. Uh... Okay. So I wonder why. Um, Wonder why it's underlined. Mouse over again, mouse over again. I want to see what it says. Um, reference to overloaded function could not be resolved. Uh, what function is overloaded? The only function that's overloaded there is the greater than, uh, the, 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 the insertion operator, double less than, and it says it could not be resolved. Um, 
you do have a uh, namespace standard. That's fine. Yeah. Um, population. Wow. I'm, I'm so that's really funky. Uh, at some point, you got to figure out why you get that uh, warning on replete, but you know, it doesn't look like a, a something wrong to me. Uh, and it also compiled just fine. All right. So uh, now copy that entire line, triple click and triple click and uh, control X. Control X, control V again. Okay. Now uh, a pet has been constructed, line 68. Paste that line on line 69. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now, if you run it, you'll actually see that the population. Oh, all right. It's, it's still zero because you know you didn't do anything in the constructor, right? You got the constructor, but the constructor just gave you a pet. It didn't do anything. So now, what we want to do is go into your constructor, and every time a new pet is constructed, you want to increment population, right? So, so in your constructor. Uh, both of your constructors, right? In both of your constructors, you want a plus plus car population. Yeah. All right. And you want to do that on the other one too. I think you missed out the semicolon and everything, right? Yeah. Semicolon? Yeah, there one. There, there too. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you run it, you'll see zero and one as it should be, right? So every time you create a pet, you just get a brand new, um, you know, pet, and then the population is incremented. Now we're going to try something, right? Another experiment. Go to your main again, um, and then um, what we'll do here is create a pet inside a block, right? And then uh, release the pet outside of the block. Okay. So what we'll do is um, after the first C out statement, where you say, you know, current pet po population is, right? Uh, yeah, hit enter there, enter, and then uh, put in a curly brace, open a curly brace, okay? Uh, get rid of the closing one, uh, get rid of the closing one and put the closing one after the last C out, right? Um, before before the current pet population is, right? So before, yeah, yeah, there, okay, yeah, yeah, enter, yeah, enter there. Okay, now um, if you want, you can indent it and clean it up, but essentially what we wanna try and do here is, uh, let me run this in my head, um, Okay. All right. Now this is going to do the wrong thing, but I want to, you know, I, I want to do the wrong thing so that we can talk about the wrong thing and then learn something from it. Okay. Now, if you run it, if you, if you run it now, you'll still, oh, geez, what the hell was it? Um, oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Uh, what was I thinking about? All right. Um, just comment out, just comment out the rest of the code because you know, what happens, you, the reason you're getting all those errors there is that, um, so I, I don't know if we talked about scope of variables, as the scope of a variable is, uh, that one also, yeah, yeah, okay? The scope of a variable is every single line in your program where that variable is alive, meaning that variable can be referenced, right? That variable you know, was created, and I can look at it, you know, X, let's say you create a variable called X, and I say, oh yeah, X, 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 you know, I refer to it, incremented, decremented, change the value. If you can do things to the variable legally, that means the variable is in scope. That's what it means, right? When people say it's in scope, it's in scope, it's out of scope, that's what they mean. It means that the variable is still inside of your periscope, inside of your scope, in, on your radar screen, which means you can go to and change it and things like that, right? If it's gone out of scope, means it's gone, right? You don't have, you can't do anything with it anymore. So the way that things come into scope and go out of scope in C++ is, you know, one of the ways, right, is, is the curly braces. If, if you have a variable, um, the variable comes into point at the time it's declared. That's called vivification, vivification, viva, viva right? It's not, I think, Latin or one of those romance languages, right? So um, viva means life. So vivification is when the variable comes into life at the time it's declared, it's vivified, right? And then from that point onwards, the variable continues to live. When, it, when does it die? The variable dies when it goes out of scope and it goes out of scope when it meets the first curly brace that closes the first opening brace 
before the variable was described, right? They declared, right? It all sounds very complicated when I speak about it, but it's actually very simple. All you need to do is pet comes into life at this point, right? On line 70, when it's declared, pet comes into life and it dies. It's destroyed when it encounters this thing here. Why? Because, you know, it, it's, it, this is the scope when that opens. That's the, that's the that's the world. These delimiters of the world in which the pet lives, right? Opening brace, closing brace. The tightest opening brace, closing brace you can find inside of which pet is declared. That is a scope. Now, when it hits the closing brace, it's the compiler thinks, well, you know, pet was created there and now it's gone out of scope. We don't need it anymore. It'll dismantle it, destroy it, right? At that point, the pet destructor has been called. It's gone. That's why when you have all these lines from 75 to 86, we refer to the my pet object, the compiler will throw a lot, a lot of red ink at you and say, hey, you know, I don't know what pet is. You know, there was something called my pet that came into existence at that, that point, and then it went out of existence at that point. So my pet doesn't exist here. And you're still referring to my pet? No, I won't let you do that because there is no such thing. So does, it, does that make sense? So it's gone out of scope. Now, the, but the problem is now if you compile and run it, if you compile and run it now, right? Um, it's gonna say zero and one, right? Because, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. It, it is at zero and one um, as, as it should do. Um, but what we want is, um, how do we do this? We want the, um, I didn't say, yeah, 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 okay, right, yeah, of course, yeah, it's, it's zero and one, but that's incorrect, isn't it? It's it's wrong. Uh, what it said there is wrong. Is it, it, tell me, anyone who disagrees with me, you tell me. What it printed there is wrong, isn't it? Because the pet came into existence at the curly brace, and then it was destroyed at the closing brace, and then after it was destroyed, we're asking it what the population is, it still says one. But it should have said zero, yes or no? It should have said zero because a pet, you know, came into existence and it died before you asked for the population. So the population at the time when you ask for the population the second time should be zero. Why is it one? Because because of the static and it's global. The, the population we incremented it and it's global, so it keeps track. Yes, but but uh, yes, it, it keeps track, but it's keeping track of it in a wrong way, wouldn't you say? If uh, yeah, so if our pet indeed is is no longer in existence, yeah. then uh, it should be zero. The, the logic kind of does not match. Yeah, right. Because it should be zero, and it's saying one. How do you make it zero? How do you make it so that it tracks it correctly? You can make it so it tracks it correctly by you know you've got hooks inside both of the constructors, meaning that every time a pet is born, you're going to increment that. That is you know a okay works fine, but you don't have hooks into the destructors. I say when the pet dies, you also got decrement population, right? We never did that. That's why every time a pet is created, population increases. But when a pet dies, it still is not dead, right? So that's you know you can say, oh well, you know my census count keeps on increasing, so all these dead people can also vote, right? Because you know in the uh, in the books of America, those people haven't really died; they're still there, right? So um, so then everything goes haywire. So that's why you know census is so important, not only voting. In, in a country, right? It's, it's important to vote, uh, to cast your vote, but it's also important to participate in the census and say, well, you know, hey, I am alive. I'm, I'm a, you know, a citizen, I'm eligible to vote. I should be counted, right? So that's why it's both of those are equally important. There's like mom and dad, okay, of a democracy. The mom and dad of a democracy are a census and voting uh, elections, right? So um, what we wanna do is now uh, hook into right reach into and grab the destructors now destructors have a funny signature right so we're going to go back uh, right under the constructors and declare destructors in your in your pet class right you know pet class go uh, yeah, up, up above i think it's line 15 or something right go to line 15 um 16 right uh so now you want two lines after the one line after that where are you going to say i'm also going to define a destructor myself dear compiler don't give me a freebie destructor which will do what you think the destructor needs to do no that's not right because my destructor needs to do some additional stuff that you don't know my destructor also needs to change population you're not going to do that for me right so i'll take over and define my own personalized customized destructor which is also going to change population right so the way to declare a destructor is to put a tilde, you know, a squiggle mark before the name of the class. So type, yeah, and then say pet, yeah, and open close, open close. 
And then, you know, you can, we can either do a definition right there in line, or you can do it out, out of line. So because we've done the constructors out of line, let's also do the destructors out of line. So now go to line 39 or I, maybe it's uh, line, uh, yeah, I think it's 38, uh, 39, 39, right? Oh, this is non-default constructor. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. No, it's actually 45, 46, line 46. Right, because you got the two constructors. Now we're going to define the destructor. So define the destructor and say pat double colon uh, tilde pat. Yeah, open close. Yeah, and then the body. I, I think you have a space after the yeah, space before the brace in the other ones. Yeah, um, there you go. All right. So um, I think you didn't have a space before the parentheses, but just after the before the brace. That's I think. No, 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 you had the space there, but you didn't have the space after the parentheses, before the parentheses. Um, before, yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, that's what it looks like elsewhere. Oh, I don't know, you gotta go and clean it up later, I think, you know, because you know some places you have and some places you don't. All right, now you say minus minus population or population minus minus, right? Uh, pet colon population minus minus. All right, now if you run it, you'll see that it does the right thing. Right. In fact, instrument your destructor and say inside of your destructor, you can put in your C outline. You know, yeah, triple triple click on forty one, kill it, and uh, paste it back. Yeah, triple click on one of those lines. Um, yeah, all right. Destructor was called. Pet destructor was called. Yeah. Right. So now you'll see that it's been instrumented properly. You can compile it and run it, and you'll see that. There you go, right? You didn't call the destructor, the company, the system called the destructor for you. You got a freebie call for the destructor and it worked, right? Now you can go into your main, you can create an array of pets too, right? You can array of pets, uh, array of pets, and then you can print the population after each pet is created. And, and you use a for loop there. And, uh, oh no, you have to create an array of pets, right? Um, Yeah, actually, it's an interesting experiment, right? In, it's going to be an instructing, interesting experiment, all right? So create an array of 10 pets right there, right? So uh, array, my a pet, space, my pets. It's, it's a plural now, pets, pets, because you're going to have many pets, right? Pets. And say 10 or, you know, some number there, right? Semicolon and enter. Uh, now, if you compile and run it, enter, yeah. Um, Um, call to constructor is ambiguous. I haven't, so I must have forgotten something very basic about the syntax. Because if someone remembers, um, let me know. Uh, pet, my pets. Why is, uh, why does it say that it, uh, you have a, because it's you have a non-default constructor there, but it should only call a default constructor. Do you, don't you have the default constructor uh, in your? Um, you do have the default constructor, and so it should call the default constructor when you initialize an array of pets. Um, just comment out the non-default constructor for now, and the declaration also. All the and the declaration also. Run it. What's going on? You still have an error? It's it's still not compiling. Compile it again. Why is it not compiling? Um, clear the screen. Uh, clear your window. Yeah, Control L. Compile it again. Oh, oh, I see. Later on, you have uh, you have a pet in your main. You have a pet where you call it. You call the non-default constructor. Oh, I see. You're also calling the non-default constructor. You comment out that line. Comment out that section. That entire section. I just want to make sure that it compiles. Yeah, run it. It should just create ten pets right there. Yeah. Okay. So it did create ten pets. Um, so the thing is, when you have that array declaration. It just goes ahead and creates 10 pets right there. Bam, like that, right? So 10 pets. It's created those 10 pets for you. Why, when you have a non-default constructor, 
uh, it complained. Did you have, go back to your declaration for the non-default constructor. Um, do you have a default value there? Non-default constructor. No, 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 further up, I got to see the uh, declaration. Oh yeah, yeah, that's why. All right, well, it turns out we never actually gave it a non-default constructor before. Um, so, uh, oh, we did. And then you also gave it a default value for name. Um, all right, now comment out, comment out your, um, comment out line 15 and then put back line 16. Yeah, no, compile and run now. So it needs a default constructor. So it does need a default constructor, but um, if you provide a non-default constructor, it does not let you create an array of uh, pets that would require the default constructor. So um, obviously we're missing something very, very simple and straightforward here. Um, I'll think about it later after class, but if one of you thinks about it and say, and figure out why we get that error, because really we're just creating an array of pets and we and, and the compiler knows how to create an array of pets because it has a default constructor on line 15. So she could just go ahead and invoke the default constructor 10 times like it did when we didn't have it on default. And uh, so I don't understand why it um, it complained. Well, all it's, what it's saying really is that it was trying to create, um, right? We can fix it very easily, right? Go to line 15 and get rid of the comment there, the, the two, yeah? And then in your default constructor, uh, get rid of the default parameter for name. So get rid of the equals no name right there, right? Now we know that you know there's no ambiguity. If it doesn't get given a parameter, it needs to call the constructor on line 15. It gets given a parameter, it needs to call the constructor on line 16, right? Now, if you compile it, uh, yeah, fix up your main too, right? In, in your main, you had a bunch of that stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah, everything else should also, well, you know, is, you, you can't do the later things because the pet doesn't exist, right? So, um, so th there you see. Now, you, you see what happens? Now you got your default constructor and non-default constructor. They're very clearly separate from each other, right? If you don't give it parameters, it'll call the non-default constructor. If you give it parameters, it'll call well, uh, the other way around, right? So, so that's how the compiler was able to disambiguate and say, yeah, you're fine. So when you have an array of 10 pets, automatically it calls the non-default constructor 10 times, bam, you got 10 pets right there, right? And then when you know your main program goes out of scope, it's gonna call the destructor 10 times. In fact, when does it call the destructor? If you have a C out statement, you, you, uh, in fact, uh, let's go ahead um, where you say my pet, instead of my pet everywhere, you know, you're gonna uncomment 83 to 94, 80, uncomment everything from 83 to 94, yeah? And then where you say my pet, uh, say pets of zero, right? The first pet, then it won't comp complain because pets actually exist at that point, right? So on 83, you say my pets, right? Yeah, double click and then right click and rename, right click and rename. I think we found that rename works and uh, yeah, click that and change it to pets of zero. Enter. Why didn't it do that? Why? I thought it worked before, right? So I think we tried this one once before and renamed all of the my pet um, to pets of zero. Yeah. Did you do a search replace or is this a refactoring? Uh, not not line seventy seven. Um, yeah, line seventy seven. Yeah. Thank you. So that should compile and run. Age is a private member of pet. Oh, what, which line? Line 92. Why is age a private? Oh yeah, you we were assigning. You got to say set, set age to four. Yeah, I think this uh, line 92 was a holdover from last class where we said we'll directly assign and we'll see an error, right? So it was an error. It was a deliberately injected error. Okay, so now you can see that, you know, um, it, it's, it's doing things in a predictable way, right? Because we say, you know, we created 10 pets right there and then uh, it printed my pet was my pet pets of zero is four years old. This was you know this line here. Oh, I can I cannot uh, highlight on your terminal, but where it says uh, my pet is four years old, yeah, that was line ninety four. And then destructor is called ten times. Destructor is called ten times after uh, the last line, uh, line ninety five, 
when it says I'm done with everything, that's when it calls a destructor for every object that is currently alive, it's gonna destroy every object, right? So now if in fact, um, you would see that if you printed population, right? If you printed population uh, after the last C out, you'll see that it's actually 10 because 10 pets existed, right? So if you see out, you know, population equals. Right? And that should print 10. Why didn't it print 10? Oh, it did print 10, right? It printed 10. Did you see that? It printed 10. And after it printed 10, it went ahead and destroyed all those 10 packs. Does this, does that make sense so far? Yeah? Okay. When is the only person who said yes? Nobody else? Giorgio? Okay. Now, um, so this, this is, I think we covered a very important concept here. Well, I mean, we covered destructors and static variables and how to change static variables and also static methods, right? Methods that are attached to the class and not to the object. So we covered a couple of, you know, actually quite a few uh, important concepts in class today uh, using an example and also played with it and experimented. And it's really cool that, you know, we have this um, replete link because anybody now can go and fork it just like uh, when did right now. Anybody can go fork it, create your own copy of the code, and you can play around with it just like we did, right? And, and, and do all these things. Um, now, um, before we try and well, we can do one more thing here. Uh, we can uh, write into. I I show you how to uh, overload the uh, insertion operator itself so that it prints the value of pad. Well, we can do, you know, one thing we can do is uh, create a special method called a two string method, right? Which knows how to take uh, a pet class, uh, pet object and convert it into a string that can be put on screen. Right now, if I ask, uh, ask uh, the system, um, print a pet. How does it know how to print a pet? It doesn't know how to print a pet. You know, a pet is a complex object. It has lots of things inside of it. So how does it know how to print a pet? So if you tell it how to print a pet, so do a C out, a C out right there uh, at the last line, right? C out um, uh, double less than pet of zero or, you know, pets of zero, pets of zero, right? And end up right there. So it doesn't know how to print a pet. It's gonna say, I don't know how to print a pet, right? Now it's gonna complain, right? So it's gonna complain and say, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to print a pet. And you see a lot of these things there, but essentially that's what it's saying because it says, I don't know how to print a pet. Now, uh, what we wanna do uh, is, you know, comment that line out for now. Uh, if nobody else has any questions, nobody else has any questions, uh, I will be more than happy to show you how to make that statement work, right? How to say, um, I got a pet class, um, but I can, I also can tell the compiler how to output a pet because in a compiler, the, the system knows how to output an, an integer. It knows how to output on a string. It can, it knows how to output a double float uh, character. It knows how to output all these types, right? Um, and you went ahead and created your own type called a pet. And you want your type to be as uh, real as possible. Meaning your type is just another type. It should be, it should behave like another type, like a plus, you know, like, like an integer or character. But right now you saw that, you know, you can't output a pet, like you can output the other types. So in fact, your own class falls short of all these real classes out there because those other classes can be output, but your class, you know, your object cannot be output. So I can show you how to make your class more real, meaning it also now supports the ability to be output like a regular uh, object. I can show you that. Um, but if somebody else has other, uh, other questions uh, or this code, right? If you have any questions about this code, we can talk about that. We have a lot of time. We, you know, in next class on Thursday, we can talk about, you know, uh, how to do a serialize. It's called serialization, right? Turn it into a string and output it. And also in that process, we can also see how to read and write to files. Because serialization goes hand in hand with writing to files. So we can, we can think about, we, we, we can talk about how to read and write from files um, with that class. Um, or we can talk about it today. I'll start talking about it today. It's 928. Uh, and so uh, if you want to talk more about this code or if someone else wants to take this code and experiment more with it, uh, you're more than welcome to. We can, we, can, we can do that today. Or if you have any questions, if you have any experiments in your mind that you want to try with this code, you know, don't, don't worry, right? So don't worry, you're going to screw up this code and mangle it and, you know, clobber it beyond recognition. That's fine because we know we have the URL, right? You can always take that code and fork it and, you know, go back and 
do it, right? So you can take this code. Someone wants to take this code and fork it and make some more changes. We will do that right now in class. Um, otherwise, you know, bring some new um, concepts and topics to talk about today and nail down. We can do that. So uh, at this point in time, I want to leave it to you guys uh, to say if you have any questions, just you know, scroll up and ask questions, and we can talk about those. Um, if not. Uh, we can talk about new new concepts. Again, these new concepts, I, I want you to tell me what to talk about, right? Not me to tell you, this is what we're gonna talk about. Hey, I've just thrown, I've thrown a couple of options out saying well, these are things we can talk about, but if you have other things you wanna talk about, that's fine with me, okay? So we'll talk about those things. Um, and I think, you know, I, um, I, I think I'm prepared and to talk about most of these concepts, um, even, even 2C and um, uh, 2C and, level and, and beyond, I've, I've given some thought to how to present those concepts in a way um, that will be accessible to people who have not encountered those concepts before. Um, so I've had a chance, you know. Um, so when I go walking, I think about these things. So I, I, I've, I've, I've got ideas uh, of how to approach those advanced concepts too. So I'm happy to talk about that. Uh, if not, just go ahead, you know, things we talked about today. Um, pick up on things that you are not 100% sure yet, and then we'll try and approach it from different directions, hopefully make it all uh, clear to you. All right, but so far, what we covered today, uh, these important concepts, are you guys solid so far on what we've talked about? What we can do is now go ahead and in a loop, uh, create, uh, if you want, right? If you want, uh, in a loop, in a for loop, uh, we can go and uh, set names for these 10 paths, set ages for these 10 paths, you know, using rand. You, know, you can create a name using the name creation function that we wrote before, right? Create a random name, or you just say, you know, A, B, C, D for the names for now, and do those random names. Uh, just give them, you know, numbers converted to names, and that's fine too. Yeah, I think we can do that. We can do that. There's a whole bunch of things we can do, right? We're only constrained by time, really. Right. We, so let's say we wanted to have a loop uh, in this main method uh, where we're going to assign each pet a name that is equal to um, uh, some random letter underscore some random number. So everybody has a different name, uh, but we just create names for those pets, right? And random ages too. So we, we can do that if you want, um, right? So in fact, that's what we'll do with the re remaining time. Uh, and I'd like someone else to take over, right? And so to thank, thank you so much, Wen, for for taking over the screen. Well, no, was that too bad? Was that was it that bad to take the screen and and talk about the code? Yeah, and you actually coded live on screen too, right? So was was that bad? No, yeah, I think that's it's pretty cool, right? So uh, more people should come up, and uh, so who else wants to take the screen, right? So take the screen. Uh, what time is it, by the way? What time is it? Yeah, my clock is up there, uh, 9.36. So yeah, we have we have 20 minutes more. So uh, if somebody else wants to take the screen, we can go ahead and create some more stuff, right? We'll, we'll add a bit more to it. We'll, we'll put in a loop, right? Thank, thank you, Wen. All right, so um, if somebody else wants to um, click on uh, Wen's link and then share your screen and we'll take it from there and, uh, and, and start coding this other thing that we wanted to do, which was to, um, uh, what is it? One, two, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll insert some loops and, and set values and and so on. Okay, it'll be cool. You'll see you'll see some stuff happen. I think. Okay. No. Nobody. How come nobody wants to go? All right, someone who hasn't gone before. We still have a number of students in class, and one of you should uh, grab the screen. Let me see. Um, I don't think Karen has gone before. Um, oh, wow. Most of you have had a chance to go up on screen. Most of you who are in class today have had a chance, I think. Um, I don't know if I want to put Karen on the spot, but Karen, you're most welcome to if you want. I know, I know you'll be comfortable with this because, you know, from your posts on Reddit, I know that you are reasonably comfortable with C++. Um, so if you want to grab the screen and uh, and drive now, this would be a good time, right? 
So just click on it, uh, unless you're, you're not there, right? Um, I, I hope you're there. Um, you can say that, yeah, I'm here, but I don't wanna go, that's, that's fine, right? And then we'll, I'm actually work right now. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Um, okay, uh, you're at work, are you able to follow along though? Or are you able to follow along with the class? Class, uh, Karen? Well, I, I expect, yeah, okay, you're listening as much as you can. All right, good. Um, all right, so how about someone else uh, said before you want to go? Nicholas, yeah, all right. You're also stuck in us. Yeah, okay. All right, so Nick is not able to go either. Uh, he's he's stuck at work. I'm, I'm just surprised. I'm surprised that there are so many people in class who are working and learning at the same time. Not working and learning at work, but working and also doing this class. You never do that. You, we never see that in face-to-face -face classes, right? Uh, in face-to-face -face classes, we don't have students uh, who are sitting in class but actually working at work. Uh, you can't do that. The only this is a new phenomenon for the COVID age, right? So when you have this working at home and class at home, um, people can be doing stuff. Multitasking, yeah, time time sharing, time sharing. Nobody can really multitask. I don't think. I don't think. Well, you know, I I, I don't think you can multitask uh, with uh, with stuff that requires conscious effort. Right? You can multitask with uh, uh, with n tasks where n minus one tasks can be done uh, subconsciously, like walking and so on. But I don't think you can multitask. So I know it's a challenge for you. So you got to do a mental context switch every time you need to go. Oh, now work stuff. Now class stuff. Right. So you got to do it. Like that. Somebody else. I think. I think someone said before. Uh, I'd like to go, but I already went before. I think it was Giorgio or Flavio. Uh, I think it was me. All right, go, go, Rizzo, Rizzo. All right, take, 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 take the screen and do it. Right. Uh, there you go. We have someone, uh, all you guys who are scared to come up on screen and those of you who are absent today, you know, uh, feel free to pass the message on to them, right? Rizzo, if you remember, was just two classes before today. He was shy. Well, I don't know if you're shy, but he was uh, reluctant to go up on screen. And now he's volunteering and saying, you know, I want to go. <laughs> all right. So, um, so that's, that's. Can you see my screen? I can see your screen. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I know, I know, Andrew, right. I know most of you who aren't volunteering were just hesitant because you've gone before. Yeah. Which really is, is, is something nice to say about this class, right? Because most of you have taken up the opportunity to go. All right, Rizzo, uh, what we wanna do now is um, in your, um, yeah, so um, what you do is after your my pet, you know, after your pets, uh, pets of 10, you wanna have a loop for loop that goes from one to 10 and inside of the for loop. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, inside of the for loop, what we'll do is um, set the name and the age and what else do we have inside of a pet, right? We'll do all that inside of the for loop. Okay, so for uh, int i equals zero or size t, yeah. size t i equals zero. You wanna do size t because i is not declared at that point. Size t i equals zero. Size type, yeah, size underscore T, I equals zero, I less than 10. And then I plus plus. I plus plus. I plus plus. Yeah, and then, yeah, thank you. All right, now you wanna say pets of I. Hi. Yes. Hey, someone's phone is going off. Uh, yes, sorry. All it right. was my friend's phone. Okay, sure. All right, that's a buy. Dot. Dot. Set age. we we'll do the easy ones first, right? Set age. Um, and set it to a random number between zero and let's say 100. Okay. So uh, set it to a. Uh, random number between zero and 100. So rand, open, close. Rand. Yeah, and then percent. Yeah, space, space percent. 
um, I don't know, what's, what's the maximum age? 100, right? 100. So you can have up to 100. Okay. All right, and tidy up with a space before the percent. Uh, so I have, I should have a space before percent, yes? Yes, yes. Because, you know, everywhere uh -huh. else you have operators with space on both sides, yeah? It's funny, I think yeah. uh, it's, it's quite a long time since I played around with Swift, uh, but I think in, uh, in the latest version of the Swift uh, language, Apple uh, kind of enforces that symmetry, right? If you, if you actually have that in, in, in Swift, I think Xcode will complain saying, hey, you have a space, it's, it's not, the space is not balanced on this operator, right? So even the cosmetic details, uh, Apple complains about in the programs now, which is kind of cool. All right, so uh, that statement basically sets the age to a random number between zero and 100, right? And set the, uh, what else is random? Um, what, what else do we have? We have favorite food, right? We have yes. food? Okay, so we wanna set the uh, food also to a favorite uh, food and we wanna choose it randomly. So let's go ahead. Uh, after the declaration for pets of 10 on line 74, hit enter, yeah? Enter. Let's create an array of favorite foods, right? So, okay, string, 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 foods. Not if they're not favorite anymore, right? Foods, space foods, uh, which is an array of uh, let's say five, five favorite foods. Oh no, maybe uh, create a 10, 10 favorite foods, right? Ten favorite foods, right? Space equals equals. No, no, just say equals. And then we're going to do an initialization, which is, this is called an initialize, well, it's not an initialization list, but we're just going to initialize all the foods right there, right? So uh, open brace, open brace, open brace, right? Space. Uh, and then uh, you want to give it the name of 10 foods in within quotes, right? 10 foods within quotes. So uh, let's say open quote, uh, open, yeah, all, all within quotes. Uh -huh. Okay. And they're not in any particular order, right? Because they're just going to be there, right? So give it 10, 10 of those. Meat, yeah, meat. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Each, each one has to be a separate string. You know, you can't have all strings in, right? Okay. Because they're different elements of the array. Yeah. Yeah. 10, 10. We need 10. Um, I don't know. What right. else? Rice, rice. Mice, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Mice. Rice and mice, you know, maybe a cat, right? Yes. Cat, cats, cats like to eat mice, right? So, mice, um, rice, mice, um, I don't know, potato, bread, cabbage, lettuce, uh, uh, onion. and zebra, maybe you know, lions. Yeah, onions, onions. Oh, you're missing an O, right? O N I O N S, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Is it, is it 10 already? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need three more. No, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We need two more. And I put in two more food food items. Here. Pizza, pizza, right? Maybe, maybe some animals like pizza. Can I put ice cream? <laughs> All right, ice cream. Okay, ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, but ice cream as a food, I can't imagine, right? Okay. All right, pizza. Okay, cool, cool. All right. Now, uh, inside of your loop, you want to select one of those randomly, right? So you want to say set uh, set favorite food to. Yeah, oh, actually, you need a semicolon on line seventy-seven. Line seventy-seven. Also on line seventy-five. Uh, also on line seventy-five. Yeah. So, and and then a return after the semicolon, right? Because those two are declarations, and your for loop is part of the program logic. Right now, also, also on line 75, at the end of line 75, you need a return and enter, right? Because that's part of the declaration and then the program begins, right? So you want to say pets of I dot set favorite food. Rand, now you want to use rand percent i, no, rand percent 10 as your index of the array foods, right? So you want to say set favorite food to foods off rand percent 10, right? So inside of your, yeah, before rand, before the word rand, you say foods, <laughs> foods, square bracket. Now, does that make someone's radio was on, right? You got to switch off your radio or phone or whatever it is. I hear that. Uh, okay. Just one minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Are you listening to the news and coding at the same time? No, I I am with my friends. So. Oh, okay. All right. Good. good so good. sorry, sorry for that. That's a, that's okay. All right. Um. All right. So clean it up. Clean it up. The rand percent ten should go inside of the inside of the braces inside of the square brackets. Yes. Thank you, Augie. Right. All right. Now, uh, also, uh, now do the same thing. Uh, names, right? You want to create ten names like that. Give it some ten random names. Yeah, copy that entire mm -hmm. line. Put it there. Copy that. No, no, copy that entire line and put it there. That'll be easier because you don't have to count now. You just need to change all the foods, right? Yeah, put, put yeah, put it there. Now change all the food names. Yeah, to names. 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 Yeah, and change all of all of them to names, right? So say the first one is Rizzo, then that Lasco. Yeah, yeah, Lasco, Lasco. Yeah, give it ten names. Yeah. Hey guys, help him, right? Because we're coming up with the proper names, uh, and he needs some help here. Okay, but give him some names to put in the brackets. Charles, okay, Charles, you got you got one, All right? Someone else, okay. give more names, right? You don't have to come up with real names, come up with funky names, right? Come up with funky names, not real human names, doesn't matter, right? Give him, give him some pronounceable stuff. Yeah, double click on rice, double click on rice. You don't have to do the drag, you know, dragging is painful, just double click will create the word. So, tomato is good name. Yeah, okay, tomato is good name, right? Tomato. Right, double click on mice, double click on mice. Yeah, okay. Go on, go on. We don't have time, guys. We don't have time. We're running out of time. Give him some names. Okay. Yeah, rice is spelled with a uh, rice is spelled with a C. He did spell it with a C. Oh, rice. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, on line 75. I don't know. It's just a uh, yeah, yeah, okay, rice. Yeah, rice. It's a food name. It should be rice. Yeah. Kiki, Kiki is delivery service. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, you can call someone Harry, uh, Harry, Ron, Hermione. <laughs> okay, we have a Harry Potter fan. Okay, uh, Lucky is a name, yeah, Lucky is could be a name. Um, okay, uh, Lucy, yeah, 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 you guys are boring names. All right, um, I don't know, George, okay. Ron, okay, all right. Now you want to set the name also, just like you did the other ones, and then okay. uh, no, no, do 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 your do the rest of the cleanup. You were uh, capitalizing the names, right? Finish that too. Um, yeah, that's a Y. You just copy and paste, and then change favorite food to name. Yeah. By the way, you know, if you did, it's a shortcut, uh, if you double click, it'll select the whole word uh, and triple click will select the whole line that will save you a lot of typing and, and dragging right later on. Okay, now, uh, after, you've said it, after you've said it, let's also do a C outline, right? And then also current population S and you drag the current population S inside the for loop, right? Every time a pet is created, well, actually, it's not going to change, right? The pets all got created right at the beginning, so you don't have to drag it in there, right? Uh, so you see out, um, right? And you want to say uh, a pet, or you, you know, so you want to say name of the pet, uh, Alaska is five years old and likes, right? You want to have all three there, right? So you want to say pets of I, pets of I, pets, pets of I, of I, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, and then double less than, uh, space is space. Quote, 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 yeah, quote. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, space is, is, uh, is, yeah, is space. And then the age, um, yeah, pets of I dot get age. No, it's, I think it's get age. You can't access age directly. Get. No, no, it's get underscore, right? Yeah, and it's a function. Can I have a... Yeah, dot, you need a dot there, yes. And get yes. And then uh, you need open close parentheses or because it's a method call, get age, open close parentheses. Yeah, and then, uh, sp uh, and then space and double less than uh, years old 
uh, or something, years, months, centuries, whatever, right? Old, uh, old, uh, and likes, and likes to eat, uh -huh. and likes to eat. Yeah, completed, completed. You need a space after eat, I think, because otherwise. Oh, yeah. And we should have pads of food. Pads of you do it. I will we'll, we'll fix it, right? Yeah, we'll fix it. Well, as it turns out, we don't have to fix it because you're doing the right thing. But uh, is the line wrapped Sh around or uh, yeah, get yeah, 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 go ahead, go ahead. And then you need an end line after that too, right? I think it's not get food. I think it's uh, get uh, what do you call it? Foods. No, 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 no. So you want to get favorite food. Get, get, get favorite food. Because mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, and then you need an end line. Why is why is it not indented? Why is it, why is it li that line not hanging off? Oh, it's just a continuation. It's wrapped around. Or oh, you just need to widen the widen the window, I guess, right, to make it not wrap around like that. Right. Um, okay. Um, now I think if you compile and run it, is everything else is in place? Um, pets of I. Oh, you can do pets of I, right? So uh, pets of I dot get name, right? It's pets of I dot get name. Yeah. Now, sometimes when we're coding, we have these extremely long lines, right? Like now, and when we have these long lines, if we can, have, we have the option of getting letting the compiler or IDE wrap around like that. Most of the time, when the IDE wraps it around, it looks very unsightly. So uh, some programmers will take it into their own hands and say, "Well, I'm not going to let the IDE break the line and wrap around like this. I'm going to do it myself." So I want a new line after, let's say, uh, likes to eat. Right, so go uh, in front of the double less than after the eat. Yeah, and hit enter, hit enter. Okay, now you see it's lined up against the C out, but it's really part of the C out statement, right? It's hanging off the C out. So you want to push it yeah. in, push it in by you know four spaces or two spaces, whatever your index level is. There you go. Okay, now uh, I think uh, yeah you can get rid of the blank line after that. And if you run it, okay. Yeah, you got a blank line after that, um, but that's okay. You clean it up later. Uh, if you run it now, you'll see that it will do the right thing. In yeah. fact, you get, rid, you get rid of the destruction. Yeah, destructor. You, 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 instrumentation, right? Default constructor. You, no, you don't have to do it now. You can do it in your own time later, right? Um, okay. But you see that uh, Lucy is 83 years old and likes to eat onions. <laughs> okay, Lucky is 50 years old, right? So every one of those is random. You picked it up and it all worked nicely, right? Yes. It's, it's kind of cool. So you can play around with yeah. it. You can play around with it and take this code and play around with it um, as much as you like. What time is it now? Yeah, well, you know, it's right up to the end of class and we did everything. We got a working program. It does something cool and it has scope for further experimentation. So you can take it away and do more stuff with it. Uh, so was this class useful to you guys? Did you guys uh, manage to pick up a new concept? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I think we actually did manage to cover some new stuff today. We covered statics. Um, also uh, got more practice in um, calling methods, uh, object, you know, class methods, and also static methods, right? Static methods, which are not attached to the object. We can call that. We know how to call statics. We know how to call methods uh, that are attached to the object. Um, I have to change these things. It almost ends. Thank you. Thank you very much, Giorgio, everybody uh, who attended class today. I hope you'll all come back on Thursday early, hopefully. Right? We start, start earlier. We have more time. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you all so much for coming. And we'll pick up on Thursday where we left off, right? So uh, hang on to the URL and uh, share it. We'll just pick up the same code and, and run with it. Okay. Thank, thank you, thank you all for coming. It was a great class today. Uh, I'm, I'm happy we covered some important material. Right. On Thursday, we'll do more.
Thank you. All right. Okay, okay. thank you. Bye. We'll see you. See you soon.